Welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode number 26, Metroid Bonanza Extravaganza. This is Jones, and with me tonight are my good friends Gohan and Daz Pick. Uh, Daz Pick, how are you doing this evening, sir? Fantastic, ready to get my Metroid on. <laughs> Just ready to attack the mother brain itself, are you? You know it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gohan, uh... This is a series that uh, you decided you wanted to do a, a little deep dive into, and nothing in particular. We're just going to take the whole lump of it and just squawk nonstop for 30 or 40 minutes about Samus and the planet. Is it Zebes? Brain friends. Zebes? Is it Zebes? Depending, Zebes? On where, depending on where you're from, I think, you know, people say it differently. <laughs> awesome. So you uh, mentioned last week this is one of your uh, favorite series of all time, is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, um, Metroid is, for me, uh, the biggest science fiction game that I played early on in my gaming career. And I'm a huge, huge, huge science fiction fan. And Metroid was the first game that let me kind of have an adventure in a science fiction world. And your experience with Metroid was the numero uno Metroid on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, that was that was my first game that I played. Um, if y'all you know remember back in the day, like there wasn't like this whole like you know release date and launch date like calendar for games. <laughs> you shit basically just came like out. <laughs> shit just came out <laughs> whenever it felt like, and oh my god, like I loved mario brothers i love super mario 2 i love zelda and metroid at least like looking at what the game was about it seemed to kind of combine both of my two favorite nintendo games at the time it had awesome platforming like mario and it had this whole adventure you know experience like zelda and that wrapped in science fiction i you know, I, I I could not wait for the game to come out, and I remember calling. If you remember back in the day, there was like these two like chains. One was called Service Merchandise. Oh my god! And the other oh, one was shit. called M Montgomery Ward. Okay. Oh my for, god! For, Christmas for, catalogs. For, so, for, but Des, for whatever f reason, where I was living at at the time, those two chains got Nintendo games first. And like okay. you, it would get them strangely enough that's where like the new games would show up first uh where i was living at and there is this poor f two f employees that got a call from a 12 year old gohan every week for about six months going is metroid in is metroid in is metroid in <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> they they got so used to me they they got so used to hearing me call them that they're like, hey, just so you know, shipments on Tuesdays, so don't call on Fridays, call on Tuesdays. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, I, I those poor employees. They they earned their uh, four dollars and twenty five cent minimum wage. <laughs> You're talking to somebody who called the TV station when the episode of GI Joe might cut out in the middle of the episode. I was like, hey, 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 hey. I don't know how this ended. When is this episode going to air again? <laughs> okay, and they're like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "The episode of GI Joe that was on tonight." Okay, I don't know I'm, what I'm happened. Ten years old. This is very. I important. need to know how this ends. People started melting. I don't know what's going on. When's this episode airing again? You gonna pick it up tomorrow? This is bullshit. <laughs> Can I get the script or like a synopsis? Like, <laughs> and it was the first kind of. At least that I remember seeing the first kind of gray box. You know, for a long time, Nintendo was doing the black box games, right? And when Zelda came out, that was like... The box for The Legend of Zelda was amazing, but I thought, you know, like the, the second wave to me was kind of kicked off with that silver box. Yeah, it was a... Uh, you'd mentioned it. It was a action platformer, you know, adventure game. And uh, the, the first Metroid was, uh, I got lost a lot in that game. Uh, I remember I had, I, I don't know if I had to, but I know I definitely did. I cheated on that one with the, uh, the player's book as far as using the map to help figure out where I was in it. A little ashamed of that, but I did it. I did it. I, I, no, I don't think, I don't think that's cheating. Like that was back then that 
that I mean that was, was your so only reference. Awesome. That was your only reference, really, of where anything that, was. That and, you know, first convers- conversations with people, which is how I did it, which was because I borrowed it from somebody. And I was like, all right, where, what the? F-? <laughs> I'm walking around. I, you know, what am I supposed to get now? I mean, what am I missing that I don't have? Oh, you need the ice cream. I'm like, oh, for sure. you know, that kind of shit. Um, so, no, no, no. I'm just getting the player's book for these kind of games at the time. When it was your only reference, I don't. That's not cheating. It's just you know, because again, much like uh, Adventure Link and Simon's Quest, they were very opaque. There's very little information to go on. You know, <laughs> got to work with what you Absolutely. got. Absolutely, the, there, there's no NPC to talk to in Metroid. It's no. just you and it's these, just you, like lonely black <laughs> <Brain> sucking space <laughs> caves. You know, and crazy, you know, technology and. It Ridley. Ruined. It did have like a couple little you know characters with Ridley and Craig and Mother Brain, but uh, oh, Craig, you know, that's right. You you weren't you know t- talking to crazy ass you know villagers in in the uh, Zelda two or sure. anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Metroid was made basically by the other team at Nintendo, and Gumpei Okoye was the producer of Metroid, and he, you know, worked with Satoru Okada, who was kind of the designer, and they were kind of doing their own games while, you know, Miyamoto and Tezuka and those folks were making Zelda and Mario, and uh, I think that they're just, like, so, like, underrated. Like, this this game was just so huge to me. Like, people talk about what which is the greatest Nintendo IP, whether it's Mario or Zelda, but to me, like, there's a third worthy game in, in Metroid and that, just because it just speaks to me as a science fiction fan so much. Yeah, I think it's a very, uh, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly or not, but I don't think it's been a correctly used franchise. Like, it's just, like, the last Metroid, like, if you go, like, because like I said, um, growing up for me, like I've always been a uh, like a console type person. So like handhelds throughout the years, I, I just was never really into them because I never really like if I'm going to play a game, I'm going to play it on my TV. Right there with you, bro. Like I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not out and about like you know sitting somewhere you know with a handheld playing a game. Like if I got time to play, it's at home and I'm on a TV playing it. So. A lot of the games for the Metroid series were for handhelds, mm-hmm. um, you know. And actually, the the last Metroid game, which is Metroid Four, which happens to be called Metroid Fusion, is 2002. You know, we've had like rehashes and stuff have come out since then, but you know, it, this is a a property of Nintendo, which they're kind of they're good on one end of just milking something to death and at the other end they're good at not touching nothing forever which you know <laughs> so they need to just like pick a road somewhere in the middle i, th- I think i and, think you're right jones like the uh the it's kind of not it's a little bit misused right like, whenever a zelda game comes out there's they're always trying to do their best to really innovate on the gameplay and with Mario, they're always trying to innovate on the gameplay. And Metroid was something that for a very, very long time, right, was just the original formula just improved. They didn't do the big innovations like Zelda 64 and, you know, wow. Ocarina of Time bringing those big franchises into 3D. But uh, sorry, Daz, you were about to say something? No, I was just going to say that like, while, while I did enjoy Metroid Fusion, I think it's a shame that one of the better games is on a handheld because handhelds, while cute, aren't really the main line where the games need to be coming out, you know? And while Metroid Prime came out on GameCube and it was good, but it was very different, uh, Fusion was kind of back to the basics and a really solid game, but it's on a freaking handheld. So you limit one by the handheld and do that the, 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 the fact that it's on a handheld <laughs> and so the scope of its release and uh, and how widespread it was it's limited to only the handheld crowd which isn't nearly as big in my opinion as the console crowd so had Fusion come out on an actual system rather than a little handheld I think it, I don't know I, I don't know I think I would have appreciated more but I mean maybe I'm in the minority 
I just I, I, I looked at it more from the sense of like it it's 2021. Okay, so you know, like you have a, a progression of a series. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, you start at one, which is Metroid for the Nintendo, and then you have Metroid Two, which is the Return of Samus, which was on the Game Boy. Okay, so then you move to Metroid Three, which is Super Nintendo. And then you have Metroid 4. Like, th this story ends on a Game Boy Advance game, <laughs> you know, from 2002. Like, all the other games, like Metroid Prime, everything else takes place in between these. You know, like, the stories aren't that complicated to begin with, but, you know, if you're trying to shoehorn a story in, like, the, I think the Primes uh, take place uh, between uh, Metroid 1 and 2 is where the, Me the Metroid Primes take place. I think they peaked at the Primes. I thought those were the best innovations on the game. Yeah, but I, the Metroid had a rough going, I think, on handhelds, even in the early days. Like, you know, the, the first game came out on the NES, and the second game came out, as you said, Jones, on the Game Boy. And because of the Game Boy's layout and resolution, they really messed around with the proportions of the game like it, because of the resolution you're basically like looking at a quarter of what would be a normal screen in metroid and the, as much as i love the first game i was kind of put off by metroid 2 on the game boy um a lot of people love that game because it you know, kind of opens up the fiction you know more but just something about like the they, they messed with the formula. It's, it was still a side-scrolling adventure game, but it just wasn't really built very well for the resolution of the Game Boy. Um, which is why I think, you know, when the Super NES came out, it was like, holy shit. You know, especially with just how amazing Super Mario World was and how amazing uh, The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past was. I was waiting for Metroid. Like, I was like, please make, it, make an awesome game on the system. And they... Uh, they, abs they, they did. absolutely did. <laughs> yeah, M Metroid, uh, Super Metroid's uh, amazing. I actually uh, played eh, about a, about an hour and a half of it the other day, and I honestly haven't played it since I would originally have had it. Like it was like the Super Nintendo's era, so I've never gone back and played it. And there is so much. It's to the point where the game's almost brand new to me. Like, I, I have very little recollection of, of anything in, in the game other than the music. You know, like, the music sounds, you know, I recognize it. But as far as, like, what's getting ready to happen, or remotely where I need to even go, uh, I'm at a total loss. <laughs> but it... <laughs> lost to the sands it of does. time. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that must have been awesome, ago. though. I mean, that must be kind of cool to kind of experience it again. No, it was definitely cool. Cause, I mean, it was it looked way better than than I thought it did in my memory. So um, it had a lot of cool things in it. Uh, just the very beginning part was actually kind of cool where you got to like get out and get back to your ship. And it's doing like this mode seven, like tilting tower thing while you're trying to platform your way out. So cool. And, yeah, they use Mode 7 really <clears throat> nicely in Super Metroid, and um, this is the first time that uh, Sakamoto, the guy who's the actual original artist, uh, took over as the game designer. And uh, for this game, they worked pretty closely with Intelligent Systems, and that's the company that worked on the Fire Emblem series. I don't know. Fire Emblem really didn't become big in the West until, like, the 3DS and era but uh they're a they're a pretty uh awesome uh development team yeah it, it was a pretty shining moment for the series uh, super metroid was in, in my book uh, especially coming from the the game boy because um to me i know there's a lot of game boy fans out there uh you guys may be one i i am not, not one. one uh game boy to me is like it's a step up from uh you know, like old Mattel football yes. handheld game. Like <laughs> yes, Game Boy I is, remember. It's visually, it's a Tetris machine. That's all I yeah, ever used I, it for to that, play Tetris. That was that was definitely the the killer app for it. I I think 
the three of us as gamers kind of had already well moved on before, you know, the Pokemon craze kind of made the Game Boy have a second wind. But yeah, it was a Tetris machine, and I, like you guys, looking for more high tech, you know. Yeah. Uh, I need more than two colors on my screen. I need more than two colors on my screen and crazy dithering, you know, <laughs> uh, blurry pixels when the screen scrolls yeah. and stuff like that. LCD delay and uh, yeah that was that was awful not a fan oh. no no now when they they finally came out with the game boy advance then like their handhelds got a little yes. more interesting to me but it's but still the same um, thing though i mean i didn't have one really and i, I wouldn't really f- be in a situation where i was like oh i need to take my game boy advance with me to go play a game you know what i mean Oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, I, I I didn't get one until the SP came out, the little foldable, compact looking one. But uh, and it was just to play a couple games. I think there's a couple Klonoas on it that I, I think I have played. yours. <laughs> <But>, yeah, <laughs> with Klonoa. Is it yeah, 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 with Klonoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but there was a. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, and that's kind of what I, I spent most of earlier today doing, is just kind of going through and just checking out all these old handheld versions of Metroid that I, that I passed on over the years. But I guess uh, Metroid Zero Mission. Yeah, I played that and Fusion uh, For the GBA was a, a remake of the first Metroid. So good. Yeah, that, that game is, like you, Jones, the first Game Boy Advance system that I thought was really worth the attention was the SP. I had a little silver Game Boy um, advanced SP. And when these, <clears throat> when Zero Mission came out, I was actually moving across the country. So all of my game stuff was like a storage. And the only thing that I had <laughs> to get my gaming fix on while I was doing this big move across the country uh, was to play Zero Mission. And, uh, that game is absolutely like the reason to me to own that system. It's really, really, really good. It is probably one of the best remakes, you know, out there where they took like the core fundamentals of the first game and just completely brought it into the Super Metroid era plus plus because it had all these like storytelling moments where, you know, they're trying to um tell a little bit more of a you know dramatic story and and another thing that i thought was like a huge improvement besides just bringing all the conventions of super metroid forward into zero mission was let's be honest like the first metroid game the bosses weren't really all that great you know Um, and i think that was one of the huge improvements with super metroid is the bosses became fun like they weren't just like these kind of bullet sponges that they were in the nes game uh, they actually had like Nintendo style, Zelda style puzzling, you know, uh, for each one of them. And I think that was just another thing that just made Zero Mission kind of the complete package was not only bring it into the modern era with all the uh, stuff, you know, that came from the SNES era, but it actually brought cool bosses, you know, into the remake, which the old one was pretty bereft of. <laughs> yeah, it did. The, the first Metroid did do uh, something that. I don't know if all of the Metroid since, but I know a good bit of them have done since, and that's always kind of like at the end of the game, you, you've uh, beaten the final boss, and we got to get back to the ship. And you know, there's a clock; it's ticking down, and you got to do some stupid platforming crap fast. <laughs> and I always remember how that was just like a. It's just tense because you don't want to do this fight again because you won, <laughs> and uh, you know you're jumping on these little platforms. You're halfway up, you slip. Ooh, you know, I drop eight screens down. <laughs> I gotta go back up. The clock's ticking. <laughs> yeah, that that sucks. Yeah, it's just nail biting moments trying to beat the I stupid mean, games. It was just such a cool kind of homage, right? Like it's clear. And I think they've even talked about it quite a bit in the press, which is just how huge a inspiration the film Alien was on Metroid. You know, from you know the female heroine to the you know biologic monster that you're fighting to the um, 
like you're saying, the the crazy race to the ship at the end. Like it was absolutely trying to bring that experience, you know, home for you know obviously younger audiences, stuff like that. But uh, they're trying to give you that same feeling of science fiction suspense. All right, gotta ask, what are you guys' thoughts on the Prime series? The first two. Stopping it there. I thought it was, uh, I think it's very cool looking. Like when, I, when it came out, I thought it was very cool. Somewhat enjoyed it. I'd never beat it. Me either. It got, but, uh, say it got lost in the. I, yeah, I always had problems with the control scheme. The control scheme does some things I think makes a lot of sense. Like, I kind of like the idea of in a first person shooter where you can kind of do the, like the, the Z lock, yeah. you know, where you lock onto a character and then you can strafe around them. Uh, that's kind of cool. A lot of games don't do that. But the, the, every other aspect of how it controls is. Jank. It, it's jank. Like, like, you can force yourself to be good at it, maybe, but it's, uh, it's not my cup of tea it, as far as what makes sense to my brain it, it's yeah. funny you know when i played it back when it came out like it was easier for me to adjust to the controls and get good at it. to the point that i got to the end of the game but then i had to like i didn't have enough missile containers so i had to go back and find them but the biggest problem was that the map is three-dimensional and it's incredibly hard to find your way around a three-dimensional map like that um to, to find the specific thing you need to go to uh but the controls because I think first person shooter controls were still kind of in flux at that point that they weren't as defined as they are today so it was easier for me to get my head around it but now that first person controls for a gamepad are very defined everybody does them pretty much exactly the same and so when this was very very different from that it feels wrong to try and play it now. Yeah, uh, I, abs- I totally agree with that. I, you know, it, it, they, there, there wasn't the formula today that they, you know, back then at all when it came to FPS design. Yeah. I agree, Jones. I think it was like their way of trying to make the Zelda lock-on work in an FPS game. And, you know, granted, you know, you're not fighting against, you know, like other players you know in metroid you know prime you're fighting against like little monsters and creatures and the 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 lock-on actually did help you know when you're fighting like swarms of little monsters which they did throw at you in the game but it was a very (laughs) no pun intended very alien experience to play that versus you know what was really popular at the time with like golden eye and uh, halo in those early you know fps games like their their controller was completely from left field yeah it was totally different and yeah and trying to play it today is like you're fighting your brain the whole time the entire time like your brain's like no no <laughs> we'll not do that <laughs> that is wrong how dare you well, sir you gotta hold this button <laughs> Yeah, one one button locks on, then another button you gotta hold to look around. Yes, and it, 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 it's very very strange. So the game itself is uh, I'm not trying to bash it too much because there's a lot of things about it I do I like. I love how it looks, it, it, but it's yeah. I don't think it's it, it's more of a uh, like a spinoff from the Metroid because it's it's not really Metroid to me. Like I mean, because you're stopping, you're scanning stuff mm-hmm. like you know like a quarter of the game. Yeah, because that's and, how you get the uh, story. It, well, it's like, you know, you got to scan this, and it, it, that tells you that, and it's like, oh, this shuts this off, or, you know, or, or whatever. Yeah. But, um, but I love the music in it. I love the atmosphere. I think it, and I think it looks great. It, it's just not like a true Metroid to me. I think if that came out today with modern, actual, proper controls, you know, I think it would be really good. I, I think, like I said, going back and trying to play it, it's just too damn hard. Like, and, and even like even now, trying to play it now, it's just it's just too much. Like, I can't I can't get my head around. It. But but I want to play it again because I, I did enjoy it. I did like it. I got to the end, but again, I didn't have enough missiles to f- finish the boss. Um, but I can't play it anymore. I tried to show it to my daughter. I was like, "Wow, I'm, I really suck at this. This is this is awful." 
Um, so, but I'm not bashing it. I really enjoyed it for its time. I wish it would come out with proper controls today, but it's not going to just Nintendo. But um, yeah, there yeah. is a, there is a lot, at, at least from my per- opinion. You know, there there's a lot to like about Metroid Prime. Like I thought it looked cool, definitely. Like the music was awesome. It was neat to kind of. I I actually did think the scanning stuff was kind of kind of cool. Uh, very atmospheric, like awesome, like level design. Uh, but yeah, the control scheme was really, 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 you know, uh, kind of at odds, you know, with with uh, the other parts of the design. And actually, I would throw an even crazier idea out. I was like, I, I don't think Nintendo really should touch Metroid until they embrace VR, actually. Um, because that, I think that that, that could sweet. be, I think that could be a really cool thing for Metroid, right? Because so much of what made Prime cool was like this 3D world and the cool heads-up display and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think that could be pretty exciting. But uh, at, at this rate, Nintendo will make their first VR game in 2050. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you roll up into a ball spinner yeah there you go back. <laughs> we lost another one let's try this again <laughs> yeah yep exactly have uh have any, any of you guys played the uh metroid the other m that was on the wii oh. no have you guys played that game oh. i didn't that was by uh team ninja That's... made for nintendo it's i played it I'm glad I didn't buy it. I was super disappointed with that game. It, it's it's strange. It's another thing that's kind of like you're saying it's misused. Kind of like kinda Metroid misused. Prime. <laughs> it, it's uh you know it's not Metroid to me. It 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 is uh it's borrowing things from the franchise, but it it doesn't have the soul that just the standard you know like 2D Metroid has. Uh, it doesn't. But it had some neat things to it, like it, you know. But it did have a thing where you, uh, you know, it was 3D third person. But then you could go into first person mode and kind of like use the Wii mote to shoot around the screen. Um, Damn Wii It looked interesting. I haven't played it. I, I watched a couple uh, playthroughs on it, but I personally haven't played it. Yeah, that was definitely the... one that I missed on the old. Skipped off the old radar there. Yeah. Now there is one that I did play that I did miss out on that I didn't know about, which was uh, Metroid Samus Returns, which is the latest Metroid game that they made back like in 2017 for the 3DS. Oh, right. And yeah. I will say, if you haven't played that game, go get it. What was it called again? That Metroid Samus Returns. Okay. And... It is a remake of the Metroid 2 that was on the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fully done in 3D, but it's played, you know, 2D, like standard Metroid style. Nice. But the game itself is 3D. And it adds a lot of things to Metroid. Like, um, not a lot, but like things, for example, you can stand still and you would have one button you hold down. It then lets you fire in any direction. So you can shoot, you know, like in front of you, like in 360. Except when you're doing that, it's kind of cool because it does an animation. So like if your character is shooting behind them, they're actually contorting their body to shoot behind them. Oh, that's cool. As opposed to just like a a 360 arm spinning around you. So it kind of is like this smash TV kind of like aiming and shooting in directions if Samus holds still. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And uh, you, it, it was really cool. And you can um, hang on a wall. Like if you jump up and grab a ledge while you're hanging off the ledge, you can still look around and shoot people. But as far as everything else, it's very, very faithful to like, you know, like Super Metroid. And, and it looked really nice. So I was very pleasantly surprised at checking that game out. And I, I may... I may try to go through and beat that one. It, it was pretty cool. Hmm. That's cool, man. Wasn't aware of it. But, Even better. Yeah, but that's, you know, it goes back to my point. Like I made a while back, you know, this is in 2017, and they're remaking Metroid 2. Like, wh- where is Metroid 5? Where's the next one in this story? 
Like, like it's you know, it can't be that hard. Maybe it is that hard. Well, I mean, they, they I don't think they it's... announced Metroid Prime Four a few years ago, right? Like during the Nintendo Direct, and at the time, they were having Namco work on Metroid Prime Four. But I guess Nintendo was not too happy with how the uh, progress was going on it, and they have actually given Metroid Prime 4 back to Retro, the people that made the first three Metroid Prime games. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what they kind of come up with, because it's been a long, long time since even the Prime games, right? And um, it'll be kind of cool to see like how they bring that experience into... You know, 2022 or whenever the game's coming out that year's you know, kind of conventions for fps gaming it'll come out on the switch pro that everyone thinks <laughs> exist and then they're, the mythic they're retarded. it's all switch pros all switch pros come with vr and metroid prime 4 you heard it here first it's like, have you learned nothing over the years have you learned absolutely nothing <laughs> these things don't exist um the, uh, the, the only handheld one I, I did play back in the day, did, did you ever play the uh, the Metroid Pinball game they had? For, I think it might have been on the DS. Yeah, I think it was on the original DS. Yeah, that was like a... I, mean, I definitely did. I, 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 I like some Sonic Pinball, so I, you know... I, Sonic's Pinball? <laughs> killed it. <laughs> killed it. Loved it. <laughs> so you might, you might dig this game, Daz, because it's a pretty, you know... For, for fans of Metroid, it, it definitely uh, delivers, so... Yeah, it did something real. I thought was really cool was, uh, you know, like in, in Metroid, you turn into a ball, roll around. So, you know, you kind of fit right in being in a pinball game. So the whole pinball game's themed after Metroid. You got little Metroids floating around the pinball table you got to take out. But what was kind of cool is as you're using the flippers to bounce your ball around, you are still Samus and you can drop bombs. So as you're bouncing the ball around, you can, you know, drop bombs everywhere, which bounces your ball, you know, across the screen. But unfortunately, it's pinball, and I am the official worst pinball player of all time. I, I really like it, but I suck at pinball. I know it, I am. Pinball is a lost art. I have never been good at it. That ball just goes between them flippers no matter what I do. <laughs> it's just <laughs> how it works out for me. But it's a cool game. But yeah, there was, what was the other one that came out? It was, I think it was for the either DS or 3DS. It was called like Federation Force, and it was basically like Metroid, but a kind of, I think it was kind of like a local local multiplayer shoot 'em up kind of game. So it wasn't any of the stuff that, you know, we associate with the series strongly with like the platforming and adventuring and storytelling and exploration it was more i think arena combat and i kind of hard pass that one but uh who knows maybe prime 4 will get uh you know bring metroid back in a big way fingers crossed yeah i'd like to, i'd like to see that i'd like to see it happen i would too I'd like to because like i think out of all the uh you know it's kind of become a genre like a like a metroidvania now and uh you know, I'd like to see the Metroid, you know, come back and, you know, take your crown. You know, let's, uh, let's change this name from Metroidvania back to Metroid. Do it. <laughs> take it back. I mean, they kind of, you know, originated it. <laughs> they did. But like I said, I just think that it, it's just Nintendo. They just, uh... They're weird. They're, 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 they are weird. It's a weird company. I mean, they're <laughs> capable of so such weird. amazing things. and On their schedule. Yeah, it's all at the, the beat of their drum, and the only people that, that are listening to that music are the ones that work in that building. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what's going on with them. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. They, you never know what they're going to do. They never do what you're going to expect. Uh, it's not necessarily even what you want all the time. <laughs> um, <No. laughs> you know, you got how many Super Smash Brothers? But no good new Metroid games. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is totally true. I, I still remember playing Super Metroid the first night it came out for over 14 hours. Like, you know, got to the <laughs> end of uh, 
Metroid Prime, absolutely loved it. Uh, the original Metroid, you know, back in the day, everybody and their mother was so surprised when at the end of the game, if you beat it within a certain time frame, you, you got to see her take off her helmet or see her at her skivvies or whatever the hell. Um, and yeah, she, she was wearing some revealing yeah, stuff you know? on the first Metroid. And everybody's like, it's a chick. Girl. <laughs> uh, not to get anybody <laughs> triggered, but you know, that was pretty big shit back then. Every, every hero was male, but either they were a plumber or they were... Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, they're great games. Uh, bummed that they released so many on handhelds, and I missed so yeah. much of it. I, um, you know, there have been so many, like, uh, of those... I don't know. We we all got to play like Streets of uh, Rage four recently. Like oh, it would be it would be I, it might be a really cool thing. You know, there's a one in a million you know chance that something like this would ever happen. But doing bring like Metroid Zero Mission, Metroid Fusion, and Super Metroid onto like Switch, so it's you know at HD resolution. Give it the Ghost and, of Goblins treatment. Yeah, give it the Ghosts and Goblins treatment because those are three, in my opinion, they're just three really classic games. Mm -hmm. The first Metroid, Super Metroid, and Fusion. Um, just they're they're games that you know, for whatever reason, they chose only to pursue uh, handheld versions of, and uh, I think that those games can find a bigger audience, especially with how popular that genre has become now. Like. Um, I don't know, maybe it's too oversaturated. Every game that, you know, independent game that comes out seems to be kind of you know, riffing off of that stuff. But uh, uh, well, it would I be mean, cool. To, it would be cool. It would be cool to see, like, the, those classic, you know, adventure Metroid games brought, you know, to you know, a 2D remaster uh, on, on newer, newer technology. Well, the other thing, and this is what kind of blows my mind, is like when I think of a handheld game, I want something that I can pick up and play quickly. And Metroid is not pick not up that. and play quickly. <laughs> it is so far from that. It is the thing you sit down and want to get comfortable and figure shit out. Not, oh, I'm going to blast through this level real quick and kill a boss. That, that is so far removed from what Metroid is. Every, every one of them. And so to focus on handheld it's just I mean like you said it's, it's idiotic and it's so counterintuitive to what the game is if it's Reggie or whoever is making the decisions over there man get your head out of your ass <laughs> Jesus Reggie <laughs> like <laughs> uh, frustrating yeah just have to wait and see yeah but I mean that's not to do. say I don't love the damn games I do I just now they're amazing games. They're so it's good. an amazing series so good. that I'd like to, uh, that I think deserves to, uh, to get the Breath of the Wild to treatment. Do what yes, to do what Nintendo is capable of doing when they put their mind to making something new. Like Mario 64. Another awesome, hey, we're doing something new with Mario and it's going to be amazing. You know? Like that was incredible when it came out. Yeah, I think a lot of their stuff when it comes out is, uh, you know, it's it's game changing. Like a lot of the things they've done has been game changing over the years. In addition to creating, you know, cultural phenomenon uh, franchises, yeah, I iconic, recognizable, <laughs> you know, parts of entertainment and society. Yeah, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's, I think for people like us who are long-standing fans of the series we're waiting for it to have its kind of breath of the wild moment and innovate mm -hmm. yeah. all right like uh you know what's uh what, what, what's stirring in the pot next uh jones well i guess uh, this was your choice and we uh, did zelda last week so uh this up to daz daz is gonna have some kind of a uh, special uh, blowout extravaganza of his own here. So let's see what he comes up up with. Well, you know, we we, we did Zelda last week, and that kind of got the old juices flowing on a series that I don't feel gets enough recognition. Before Breath of the Wild came out, it was one of the things that kind of did the Zelda thing, but did it in a different way. That was it paid homage to the game. 
and it was still awesome while implementing, you know, current at the time combat mechanisms like God of War style action combat, but still the puzzle solving and adventure aspect of the Zelda games. And that was the Darksider series, particularly Darksiders 1. There's four of these games at this point, but Darksiders 1 um, is, I, I think, by far the best of the bunch. I, I, I don't think you've played this, Gohan. I, I know Jones has, and I think you owe it to yourself to sit down and just give this a little bit of a deep dive, as deep a dive as you can. You know, uh, I, I think you'll be surprised. Uh, I'm a huge yeah, I, fan. I remember, I remember when the game came out and it got really good reviews. And uh, a game that they definitely brought up in the reviews was, you know, The Legend of Zelda. So that's pretty high praise. So uh, definitely looking forward to uh, give this a try. I've never played any of these games. And the first one is definitely, in my opinion, the the best of the three. Yeah, easily. The story is so good. But we'll get into that next week. I don't. I, I, you get me going on this, I'm gonna go off. So, I'm gonna stop right there. Right, we gotta stop him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, stick around the next week, and uh, you see how we uh, take on the Dark Sider series. Till then, this is uh, Jones with Dasbeck and Gohan, and we are signing out. Until next time. <laughs>